Well, before that, I said I was, you know, doing my things happily at NUS. I was asked to start SMU. I was happily working in SMU, and the Ministry of Education called on me again. He said, hey, we would like you to be on the steering committee to start the fourth university. And the fourth university, as it turned out, is the Singapore University of Design and Technology, SUTD, Technology and Design. And it's an engineering university specializing in both engineering and design. I will talk a little, a little bit more, and that's a fourth university. In the process of working on the fourth university, SUTD we call it, the Ministry of Education called. So it's time for us to start the fifth university, which is Singapore Institute of Technology. And this is the one that I personally think that may be of most relevance to you folks, given the diversity of your you know, UTT campuses and subject matters. And in, in SIT, it was a very, very different experience. And we put in place programs that are pretty unusual. And I will describe that. It's a technology, more vocational type university. And that was the fifth university. And I was seconded from SMU to help start that university for three and a half years, close to four years. And I finished my engagement. I came back home. Home for me is SMU. So I talk a little bit about all these experiences and how collectively all these new universities add on to this national landscape of university, which is very diverse. And it also fill in the gaps of all the industry's requirement and needs and providing labor, providing skilled workers to all the industries. So it is a pretty much nationally planned strategy, but they took different points in time of the history to put the entire piece together. So it did not happen, bang, once, you know, at all at the same time. No, it is over 20 years. So this is a long-term thing. This pretty much is the executive summary. You know, for the longest time, we only had two universities, as I mentioned earlier on, NUS and NTU. Then the third one came, SMU, which we talked about it you know, in the morning. For those of you who are interested to find out more about SMU, please go to the website. And there are quite a few pretty interesting stuff happening at SMU. Then I mentioned SUTD, the fourth university came into the picture, and the fifth university, SIT came into the picture. And the latest is Singapore government decided to fund a private university, a small cluster. They call it University Unisim College, meaning a small group of students going to Unisim College will be funded on the same capitation as the other public university. University of SIM is a private university but a small college within the university is funded by the government. And this new education landscape is pretty fascinating and it is, in my mind, very interesting. The landscape is changing big time. You know, the government announced, this was probably about five, six years ago, University cohort participation rate need to increase from 25% to 30%. This is a small number relative to your number. When I went to school during my time, getting into the local university, I would have represented 3% of the cohort. The cohort definition is when you enter primary one as a cohort, all the way to university level, what percentage of the cohort get into the university funded by the government? During my time, it was about 3%. During Kuan's time, it's probably about 15%. Today, 2015, 
it is 30%. Half of yours. In the old day, getting into university is a very elitist thing. You know, only the top 3% get into the university. Then it was 10%. Then it was 20%. And today, 30%. Every, everyone knows the economy had been expanding, had been growing. Diversification, you guys talked about. You want to go into this industry, that industry, you want to do this, you want to do that. What that means is that you need to produce workers, graduates that can connect, that can work into some of these new industries. And the government from day one had created polytechnics. It is a very key component in the education system. Let me show you. This is a scheme. Primary school cohort. This is a compulsory education. Nursery, you know, you go to kindergarten, you go to primary school. Pretty much 100% of the kids all go to primary school. There is a primary school national exam after six years. And the good ones get into the express stream. The express stream actually means the normal stream. Most people get into this stream. The lesser students get into the normal stream, which is a bit strange. They don't want the not so good students to sound abnormal. They call them normal. So the good ones are express. So the big chunk, probably 60, 70% would be here. The not so good one go into normal stream. The normal streams will take five years rather than four years to do, you know, go into junior colleges. This is after finish, the school system express, they take O level. Good O level results, they go into junior colleges, which is pre-university in the old days. Normal has got two streams. The regular versus technical. If your primary school results not so good, you go into the normal stream, you can go into the technical stream, vocational stream, hands-on. They do a lot of technical th things. And thereafter, you go to ITE, Institute of Technical Education. The short form is ITE. You look at this scheme. There's a lot of movement. Typically, students finish O-level, go to A-level, they go to university. This stream is well taken care of. This stream, you go into normal, you go to polytechnic. Some of the O-level kids go into polytechnic. The not-so-good kids go into ITE. They can also go into polytechnic. And the polytechnic kids can also get into university. So this is the national education scheme. The government at that point, when SIT was created, decided to increase the participation rate from 25% to 30%. SIT will take the big chunk of it, 4%, SUTD being a specialized engineering university, just 1%. So this was the story. Polytechnic is important. Singapore government decided to keep polytechnic. In the Commonwealth, United Kingdom had changed all the polytechnics into universities. Hong Kong followed, Australia followed, New Zealand followed. So there's no longer this thing called polytechnics. Most of the poly had evolved into polytechnic university or whatever new universities. Singapore government decided to hang on to polytechnic. Reason is, Industries still need diploma holders to do technical vocational jobs. Skills are required. The setting up of SIT largely is a feeder program for polytechnic kids. Polytechnic run all kinds of very interesting diplomas, very vocational type of diploma. Many of them go to work, some of them don't. Some of them want to continue on to do university education. Those who had decided to do university education, they get good grades from poly, but when they apply to the local university, unfortunately, many of them don't get in. The system is biased towards A-level getting into universities. 
Polytechnic getting, in, getting into university is a little bit of a challenge. SIT came in largely is to take the polytechnic graduates into SIT university program. So it was created as a feeder program for polytechnic kids. Our Prime Minister, Lee Hsien Long, son of Lee Kuan Yew, recently announced university cohort participation rate has to go up to 40%. Remember, we talked about 25% to 30%. Now, he added 10 more percent, meaning more Singapore kids can get into university. And SIT will become a university of 15,000. SIT will become a big university. Reason is the polytechnic cohort is becoming bigger and bigger. Guess what? In the old days, all the Kids with good results go to A-level. The not-so-good one go to polytechnic. That was the norm. Ladies and gentlemen, not anymore. Today, 30 to 40% of the kids from O-level, they get good grades, but they do not want to take A-level. They said, I want a skill-based vocational education. As a result of wanting that, I can get a job immediately if I don't go to university. So about 30 to 40% of the top students decided, I want to go through the polytechnic routes. So this group of kids finishing polytechnic education, they are good kids, as good as the A-level kids, having, struggling, getting themselves into local universities. The government said, if we don't do something for them, that group, the top 30% from poly, we would be wasting our talent. Many of the polytechnic kids who can't get into the local universities go overseas. They go to UK, they go to Australia, and many of them come back with first-class degree. Many of them don't come back. <laughs> they stay on in UK. They stay on in Australia. So we have brain drain as a result of not accommodating, not taking them into our own system. And the government decision is, let's fix that. So SIT was created for that, and I'll talk more about this. So the government's agenda is, let SIT be the big university that will take in most of the polytechnic kids. And the government is pushing for a more flexible tertiary education, whereby students can move from one system to another system, from vocational to academic, academic to vocational system, which is a major change. And the government is talking about work-study model. This is the model actually evolved through SIT. When I was then the president, we took the ministers to look at the German system, we took them to the US system. US, you go to places like Drexel University in Philadelphia, you go to Waterloo University, you, know, you go to Northeastern in Boston, they all have what they call cooperative program, meaning the students in the co-op program, they study, they work, they work, they study. They come to and from the two sectors. SIT, we put in place some of this program, which is very interesting. Skills future. This is the biggest thing in the last couple of months in Singapore. All of us are going to live longer. Today, if you get out of university, the likelihood is you're going to be working for at least 45 more years before you retire or drop dead. Seriously. And the point is, 40 years down the road, what kind of jobs going to be there? We don't know. The government doesn't know too. The government is putting a scheme on the table. Skills future. Basically, the government is putting money into our bank. Every year, they said, we're going to give you $500. You take the $500, go attend whatever courses you think will be relevant for you, will be good for you. And the Work Development Agency, in short, we call WDA. They have created an entire entree of certificate program, diploma program, industry-based programs. You can actually sign up for those programs. The government subsidized, ranging from 50 to 70%.
you can use the money that government park at your bank account to pay for some of this program. So the government is working big time for the next 10 years, skills future. You can go onto the website, this is something new, the parameters are still working through, but all the universities, all the polys, we are working very closely with the government on this because all of us need to be retrained. All of us need to go back to school for the rest of our life. This is a lifelong learning kind of journey. And this is to prepare for you losing the job and new job come on board that you will be well equipped for the future. So these are all new initiatives put together by the Prime Ministers. And as I was saying, 40% of every primary one cohort go to polytechnic. The quality of graduates, in fact, are very important to Singapore, very high. They are able to get jobs and it is a very important sector. SUTD was created. This university was the fourth university and I was, again, being very blessed. Ministry of Education put me on the steering committee. So we actually visited several top universities and eventually we picked MIT to be the partner. The whole agenda here is to create a very different integrative multidisciplinary engineering program with design. So it has architectural program, it has design program, and as you can see, these are not your typical engineering program. These are new engineering programs. The typical engineering program would be mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and so on and so forth. These are, you know, well, product development, engineering system, and design, information system technology, and design. So design is a key component. The whole agenda is, today we know design is big deal. Product sell, not because of the capability of the product producing something that we need to use. It's because we think the product is cool. Design has become everything. You walk into a shopping mall, how they configure the retail space is all about design. So design thinking is the key element of this university. Why do many of us use Apple? In terms of Apple, the technical specification of Apple is lesser than many, many phones out there. It's even lesser than some of the made-in-China products. <laughs> and Apple is made in China. It openly says they're designed in California, manufactured in China. All the pieces and components are all from China. But we like it because it's cool. It's all about design. So design moving forward is a big deal. How can we weave design into engineering? That is something that we need to think through. So this university, unfortunately, does not quite get the students excited, despite the fact that MIT and Zhejiang University is there. Zhejiang University is a top Chinese university. It is right in the heart of China, Silicon Valley. The kids take an education that is co-designed by MIT and SUTD faculty. They go do their internship in China, in Zheta, which is Silicon Valley of China, and there's a lot of design component. The students are not responding the way the government wish to see happen. So recently, because I was in the original committee, the chairman said, hey, prof, can you come help SUTD? I said, yeah, we can help. Penn, University of Pennsylvania, has a very popular program called Jerome Fisher Program. Jerome Fisher Program, four years, you get a technology degree from the engineering school, you get a business degree from Wharton, so we visited Penn, visited both engineering and Wharton. We decided to collaborate SMU with SUTD. So spend four years, you get two degrees, one from SMU and one from SUTD. So in my mind, this is a pretty cool thing, you know, a dual degree, engineering plus business. Like I said, this is a new university. SIT, I'm going to spend more time on because I personally think this is relevant to you guys. When we started this university, we identified a few areas. These are areas largely the local universities do not 
offer degree programs in. The government's agenda is not to create more competition, it's to fill in the gap. So I was brought in as the president. My deputy president came from EDB. Someone mentioned EDB. EDB knows where are the industries coming into Singapore, foreign investment, where are they putting the money in? So EDB worked very closely with us. Ministry of Manpower worked very closely with us. We know where are all the gaps, whereby the industry is growing, jobs are plenty, but no graduates to fill the gaps. So we designed programs largely to fill the gap and not in competition with the local university. Just to give you some examples. If you look at Newcastle, it's mind-boggling. These are in areas whereby marine engineering, naval architecture, offshore engineering. Singapore, Sembawang Corporation and Keppel Corporation are the two biggest shipbuilding offshore oil rig producer. Keppel and Sembawang Corporation, two companies contributed 70% of the world's offshore oil rig. And our local universities do not offer degree in offshore engineering, naval architecture and marine engineering, which is surprising. So one of the things that we decided to do, they need a lot of engineers. They need hundreds of engineers. They need to grow. So we work very closely with the government. We brought in Newcastle, do the programs under the umbrella of SIT. Basically, the government said, polytechnic kids go to Newcastle, do any of those degrees, they only need to do two years. Because polytechnic diploma is three years. British universities recognize whatever they have done as equivalent to year one of the university's degree. UK degrees are three years, they do two more years, they get a degree. Without SIT, they go to UK, the same. After two more years, they get a degree. So what is happening here is the government say, you come to Singapore, we fund you the same way we fund the local universities. We bring in your capability, you bring in your, you bring in your professors, our kids get an education in Singapore. They don't have to go to Newcastle. After graduation, they stay in Singapore. So there is no brain drain. This program, when we started, 50% of the classes sponsored by Sembawang Corporation and Keppel Corporations. The first batch that we graduated, 100% all grabbed up by Keppel and Sembawang Corporations. So this is a gap. No local engineering schools are producing this. So we fill in a gap, we get a foreign university scene, and we produce graduates who know offshore engineering. Singapore has good education system. The missing link in the education system, guess what? Early childhood education. This is a missing link. Today, the players in early childhood, your nursery program, your kindergarten, are non-degree holders. These are people who happen to love kids, but they are not trained to educate kids. That was a system. So the government said, we need thousands of people with degree in early childhood education. So we brought in a liberal arts college, Wheelock College. Wheelock College specializes in early childhood education. The whole agenda here is, in the next 10 years, we want all the kindergarten teachers to be degree holders. Again, this is working with the government. The government see the gap. Hey, let's train more of these guys. Let's make sure teachers who are training our young minds are some of the brightest and not people who cannot get jobs and want to play with kids. <laughs> so, another gap. DigiPen. Very few of you probably know of DigiPen. DigiPen Institute of Technology out of Seattle, US of A. They are the number one video game educator. They have degree programs that teach kids how to do video game design, video game coding, and it's both arts and science. They use a lot of mathematics, a lot of 
computer science, a lot of IT know-how to create game design, video game, animation, special effect. So we brought Singapore government in the diversification plan, want to create a new digital industry. When you want to create digital industry, you need to have workers, you need to have players who understand the trade. So we brought digital pen into Singapore largely because we need more graduates in this space. So DigiPen is one of the few in the world that can actually produce degree holders who can put together video game and they are amongst the best. And this again, the local universities don't do this. You're in engineering, you're in computer science, you're in IT, but you don't get into digital art. You don't get into animation. You don't get into special effect. These are all specialized areas that local universities do not have competency to do. The next one is very interesting. When I went to Culinary Institute of America, it totally blew my mind. Our general understanding of restaurant, chef in the restaurant cooking, do they need a degree? Yes, they do. Hello. No different from any other professions. Your executive chefs in your Four Seasons Hotel, in the Ritz Carlton Hotel, many of them have degrees. So Culinary Institute of America is the number one in the US. They graduate the kids with Bachelor of Professional Studies in Culinary Arts Management. They teach leadership, they teach marketing, they teach management, they teach finance. As an executive chef running a hotel, you have four or five restaurants under your management, you need to understand leadership, teamwork, team building and management. So they have business component, they have liberal arts component, Plus, obviously, you need to be in the kitchen. You need to know how to cut the vegetables, you know, how to slice your pork, and how to fry good chicken. So they have very vocational kind of training plus management. So again, when we started this program, there is a gap. We talked to the industry. The industries complained to us, all the big hotels. Hey, you know, all the executive chefs are from Switzerland. Swiss, Switzerland has very good hotel schools, they have very good culinary schools. They're all foreigners. What about our own local talent? Can they not be executive chefs? The answer is yes. We need to train them. We need to prep them. So we brought them in. And bearing in mind, all these things that we are doing, the polytechnic diplomas have them. So they have already done three years of similar studies so what we do is to fit them into the same program. You have done three years of video gaming design, you fit into a degree program. You have already done culinary diploma, we fit them into a degree program. University of Liverpool, we all know, criminal, plenty of them out there, security is a problem. So how can you put in a program that looks after digital security and criminal? This is a specialized program. This was commissioned, this program. 100% of the kids going to this program are sponsored for by the police department. There's a gap. The police department cannot find people with this expertise. So we brought 